in your real estate career, you're gonna encounter some nice houses and some really gnarly ones. In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to evaluate rehabs so that you can use it to find great deals. And we start right now. Hey there friends, my name is Anson Young and I am a real estate investor. We do wholesales and flips and wholetails and all kinds of stuff here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. And I'm also a licensed real estate agent. So I kind of play both sides. I do both things. Some people think, you know, real estate agents are the enemy, but we're not. I also invest, whatever. And I'm also the author of this book, Finding and Funding Great Deals, that is out through our friends right here on Bigger Pockets. And if you want to find out more, if you want a discount code, hang out till the end of the episode. I'll give you a discount code for 20% off at the Bigger Pockets bookstore. And you can use that to get 20% off, exactly like I said it. And since you're right here on Bigger Pockets YouTube channel, please give them a like and a subscribe. Check out their other videos. There's Brandon, there's David, there's Mindy, there's all kinds of really cool people who are giving out free information. But we really appreciate your support and for the channel, all 720,000 of you. And don't forget at the end of each one of these episodes are action tips so that you can take this information and go act on it. All right, guys, let's talk. I have a confession. I really didn't want to do this video, and it's because estimating rehabs is such a huge topic. Entire books have been written on it, entire videos. You could do a two hour class and barely scratch the surface. It would be a huge disservice if we did not talk about this important topic, because how could you even know you have a deal if you don't know what it's going to cost to fix it? And I can't let you amazing people down. Can't do it. And the biggest reason is because a rehab here in Denver is going to cost differently in Portland or Oklahoma City or Tallahassee, Florida or wherever. The same scope of work is going to cost a different amount in each place. So some of this is going to be generalized and you're going to have to put in the work going through the three steps that we talked about, three different ways to analyze rehab costs in order to get a better idea for rehab costs in your area. So there you go, confession time over. So why is this important? Well, when you're analyzing a deal, you need to plug in as many variables, as much data into your flip equation so that you can actually analyze to see if you're chasing a deal or not. So a typical flip formula might look like this, where you're taking the after repair value and the purchase price, and you have to know the rehab costs in order to solve the equation. So without knowing the repair cost or the after repair value, which is coming in next episode, then you don't know if you have a deal. If somebody just throws out a purchase price, but you don't know how much it's gonna cost to repair, how can you, how can you ever know that you have a deal? Now the detail level of your repair estimate really will depend on your investment strategy. A wholesaler or a wholetailer might just kind of have a more general budget and not go into each and every line item. Whereas a fix and flipper or a landlord will want a more detailed analysis if they're getting a loan or they just, obviously, the more data, the more accurate you can be, the better. But again, depending on your investment strategy, if you're a wholesaler, you might say, this is roughly $20,000 to fix up and that end investor is going to do their own homework anyways but that just gives them a starting point. So let's get into it. I'm gonna cover three ways to analyze rehab and some fun ways to improve your accuracy as you go. So let's get into it. Let's go. Here in part one, we're gonna let an expert do the work for you. This might seem like a cop-out to get a general contractor to come and analyze the rehab for you and you're just relying on them, but it's honestly the easiest way and the most newbie friendly way. Why do all of the heavy lifting when you can hire a professional to do it for you and you can focus on other parts of the business? After all, they write estimates on a daily basis, they get hired based on those estimates, and they have to stick to those budgets, cue the laugh track, 
if you've ever done a rehab or worked with a general contractor, <laughs> here come the change orders, right? But most of the time they have to stick with those prices or stick with their estimate. So how do we get a general contractor to work with us? Well, the first way is to network and that is getting out there into the community, finding investor friendly contractors who are willing to come out and check out some of your projects and give you scopes of work. Another way is for referrals. Sometimes my contractors aren't busy enough and so I'm happy to give them to another investor if it's going to mean that my contractors are happy, they're busy, hopefully not too busy so then uh, you know next time I need them they're around but you get the idea, a good referral from an investor can go a long way. And another kind of hack that you can do is if you go to the pro desk at Lowe's or Home Depot, they deal with contractors on a daily basis. And if you just wanna build some rapport with the person at the desk and ask them, hey, I'm looking to do this kind of project, do you have any contractors that you can recommend? And many times they have their favorites that are easy to work with and they'll give you a recommendation there too. So you're kind of going to the source of the pros where the pros hang out to get a recommendation for the pro. I mean, it's kind of cool. So when you get a property that you need to further evaluate and it's ready to get on to the next level of the, of the cycle, you're maybe talking to the seller who called you off of a direct mail. Now you need to get in and check it out and you're gonna ask them, hey, I need a contractor to walk through it. Get two to three contractors to go with you on that walkthrough if you have to set it up all at the same time or different times whatever works, but why have two to three contractors when you're only gonna hire one? Well, each one of them, you're going to ask for a line item bid. This is kind of breaking out every single thing that needs to be done to the property and their price that's attached to it. So you'll have paint will be its own category, labor might even be its own category for each section. So it might be paint supplies, then paint labor. Uh, different contractors kind of do it in different ways. So if you have three line item bids for the same property in front of you, you can kind of see where some contractors are a little bit more expensive in some areas and some are cheaper in other areas. And the more data you had, if you had 10 contractors go through that property, probably not realistic. If you had 10 contractors go through that property and you had 10 points of data on paint or on flooring or bathroom remodel, then you can kind of set that up in your own spreadsheet to give you a value of ranges of what that should typically cost for that size of home. So you can see why having two or three go through, you can compare them kind of apples to apples, like for like. So every single line item you can see on each one what it's going to cost. And a really good experienced contractor with a great bid can be a good negotiation tool as well, where you can bring that to the homeowner and say, listen, you met Bob the other day and here is his actual bid to fix the property. As you can see, it needs a lot more work than we thought. So a good contractor that you bring with you and team up with can work with both evaluating the repairs and with negotiation. So, I mean, it's a, it's like a double win. Part two is the square footage estimate. How about another confession? I actually don't really like this method as it's not very accurate, but it can be a really good ballpark of the repairs if you just need to plug something into an equation to see if you're pretty close on your purchase price, something like that. This method is pretty dang simple though. You just take the square footage of the property and you apply a multiplier to it based on the amount of work that is needed. And before I give you these numbers, just know that they're very general and things can change from market to market or area to area. Lumber prices, I know, right? All kinds of different construction costs differently in each market. So you might have to tweak this a little bit, but it'll get you close. So while you're out there networking with other investors, why not ask them if they have a kind of general rule of thumb on a square footage multiplier for estimating rehabs? They might have to go through the last few projects that they did and just actually work it out. Like this cost $30,000 and it was a thousand square feet. There you go, there's your multiplier. Well, you have to do a little math to kind of backwards engineer that, but 
you know, you're all smart cookies out there. You might multiply it by $5 a square foot if it's a very, very light rehab, 10 to $15 a foot if it's a medium light rehab, somewhere in that range, and definitely $25 a square foot plus if it's a heavy rehab. So light rehab is items like cleanup, carpet, paint, and some light refreshes. Medium is everything that's on the light list, plus counters, light fixtures, bathroom and kitchen finishes. It might include one of the major systems like a furnace or electrical panel. Heavy is everything on the first two, plus more of the major systems like windows, roof, kitchen cabinets, appliances, flooring. Here's also a disclaimer, no serious flipper or really landlord that I know actually uses this as their final number. It's just a good way to get a general ballpark. If you're a wholesaler, this might be a good way just to throw in a rehab number and then make sure that the end investor does their own due diligence, of course. Part three is the breakdown method. This is like the college level rehab estimating out of the three that we're talking about today. This is like going in and doing a contractor bid and a line item estimate, just like a contractor would, but you're doing it. You're the contractor, you're the guy. So usually you need a bit of experience under your belt in order to do this. So as you're walking through the home, you need a broken down list of every item and system in the home so that you can take notes, take some measurements, and then go back to the office and start pricing out these items. This is everything. This is light fixtures and flooring and outlets and trim and doors and door handles and toilets and tile and vents, windows, paint, labor, carpet, ceiling fans. You get the idea. So as you can see, this is going to be a pretty big list, but the more detailed and accurate you are, the better your rehab estimate will be. I mean, if only they wrote a book about this so that you can get better at estimating these things, that would be great. I mean, if they did. Thank you. So I'd recommend this book, Jay Scott's book, also out through Bigger Pockets. It's a good 200 and something pages of breaking down the entire estimating process in a breakdown method, break down the breakdown. So thank you. So getting good at the breakdown method is a good place to get to if you don't want to rely on contractors to show up and do these bids for you. Honestly, most investors, they know the breakdown method and they know the general costs but they're busy, they're working on other parts of the business, so they still hire general contractors to then bid and go through that whole process. But they have that in their back pocket in case they can't get a hold of a contractor, they have a pretty decent idea of what something will cost to fix. So here is a pro tip. When you're just starting out and you're networking, you'll come across other newbie investors. And this is what I say that you should do. So get four or five or 10 of you, and you're going to get a contracting masterclass for a low cost for each one of you. And this is how you do it. You all team up and you throw 50 to $100 each into a pool, not like a you know, swimming pool. And then you approach some contractors and you say, listen, if we pay you $500, there's five of you times $100. If we pay you $500 for two hours of your time and we can walk through an entire property and you can answer all of our questions, is that something that you'd be willing to do? And I would bet that there are a lot of contractors who would take you up on this, especially if you have five or 10 people. I mean, that's a decent amount of money for the hours that they're working. So the contractor will go through the property room by room with you, give you line item bids and answer all of your questions. This is going to be the best 50 to $100 that you will ever spend at that point in your career. So that leaves us with our action steps. Number one is to start gathering general contractors. Get together with three or six contractors that you get from networking or referrals and give them a call. Figure out what their timelines are like, how busy they are, if they're willing to work with you, all that good stuff. It never hurts to keep 
more contractors than you need in your stable so that in case something happens to your favorite ones, you have at least a few more that you have a warm introduction to at least. Number two is to analyze line item bids. Get these from the contractors that we talked about in step one, or if you have some investors in your area that are willing to share their last few contractor bids with you and just let you have them, that would be ideal too. Start taking notes, start documenting what things cost, get a good idea of what's going on. And number three is just to start getting your reps in. The more properties that you analyze, the more contractor line item bids that you look over, the more accurate that you will be when you are analyzing deals. Because you don't know if you have a deal until you know what it's going to cost to repair. Get your reps in and go collect big checks. So as promised, here is the code for 20% off at the Bigger Pockets bookstore for my book, Finding and Funding Great Deals. Just over here somewhere. Check that out if you want to. The next video in this series is going to be after repair value. Again, another thing that you need to know before you can know you have a deal. I'm Anson Young. If you want more information from me, you can find me on Bigger Pockets. Send me a message over there and connect. Find me on YouTube. Find me on Instagram. Connect with me because you never know. You can reach out to me and we could partner up someday. That would be awesome. So until next time, happy estimating repairs. Have fun. It's fun. See you later.